to kind of bring it back to DACA and what's going on, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that say that we need to come up with a solution. I mean, you look at a poll and most of them will say pretty much the same exact thing, that we need to come up with a solution. But for some reason, Washington hasn't been able to wrap their brain around how to do that. And I say this because I think the three of us may not always agree on the right course of action or, or how to get to a certain uh, end um, on, on various policy issues, right? We, we kind of span the spectrum here. Um, but what is going on right now, uh, an issue that's so understood that needs to be addressed, but yet Congress and Washington just hasn't been able to do anything? Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot going on. Uh, there's a lot of movement running on a treadmill, but not yeah. actually getting to a destination. I'm going to step back before talking about DACA. DACA just uh, applies to a particular population, right? Uh, initially it was 800,000, now expanded to about 1.2 million young people that were brought here as, as children, basically. But there is a larger population that uh, falls into the category of undocumented immigrants. The reason, I'm going to step back and talk about why we are where we are. Uh, it's been 32 years since we last had a substantial material change to our immigration system in the United States. The system itself is broken. I think everybody agrees with that. The system itself that we have right now does not meet the needs of our economy or our security. Um, I'm a proponent of having an immigration system that's uh, more fashioned around the needs of the private sector uh, workforce that, that when we we are at a point now where we're creating many, many jobs. That's a good thing. We're close to near un, uh, zero unemployment uh, functionally. If we hope to be able to fill those jobs, we need to be able to bring either have a lot more babies uh, or bring people in from, from other parts of the world that can help fill that demand, right? Supply and demand. The system that we have in place right now that we've had for since 1986 does not do that. So when people say, well, why don't these people just you know, become citizens? It's not that easy. There's not any good mechanism to have people come to this country to fill jobs in a, in a quick way, and there's no uh, simple path for people who are undocumented today to become normalized with the legal process. So the, the conversations around comprehensive immigration reform that we've been working on since 2006 is around creating a system that better meets the, the needs of our economy creating a system that meets our, the needs of our security and takes care of how to deal with that population of 11 million people. Within that population, there was a segment that we thought, there was broad agreement that since they came as children, let's provide a mechanism by which they can at least be right with the law, right? But even doing that has proved virtually impossible because both sides uh, have chosen to use it as a political football, to blame each other, right, to do this. Uh, and that's gotten us to a point where we're not able to get anything, any legislation passed in Congress, which is why in the case of President uh, Obama with the DACA uh, executive order, um, he did that as a way to be able to sort of band-aid uh, uh, um, a system for this, this population. I criticized it at the time because I thought it was just a sugar rush. It didn't have the force of law behind it. It was not sustainable because the next president could come in and just do away with it. And that's exactly what happened, right? So all of us in this room, all of us around the country, all of us that come from the private sector, all of us that care about uh, immigration and, and the future of our nation ought to be urging our elected officials at the federal level to put partisan politics aside for just a little bit and solve this one particular problem. 